Hey everybody, this is Praxis. In this video, I'm going to be talking about my procedure for seasoning cast iron cookware. If you're like me at all, you, when you first got cast iron cookware, you looked around online to try to get some references on how you could season it uh, before you started using it. And if you're also like me, you found that those procedures don't work at all. I've asked around with a lot of people and apparently I'm not alone in feeling like the conventional wisdom that's out there for how to season cast iron cookware kind of doesn't work. So in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you my secrets for how to season cast iron cookware using a procedure that works even for something as insidious and food grabbing as a waffle iron. Sometimes I'm pretty surprised with how much bad information there is floating around online. If you're like me when you got cast iron stuff, you probably went online and Googled how to season it. And if you're like me, you probably got some kind of an explanation about where you put some kind of a fat or an oil, whether a vegetable fat or an animal fat on there, you heat it up to a certain temperature and then you put it upside down in your oven and leave it in the oven at some kind of a temperature for some amount of time. And then voila, magically your pan is seasoned. Well, if you're also like me, you found out that, that procedure doesn't really work very well. Now, I always felt that it was just me, that maybe I was doing something wrong or I just wasn't getting it. But in talking to a lot of people and asking around, I found that, well, you know what? I've never actually met anyone that felt that that procedure worked really well. So I ended up developing my own procedure. And like I said, it works even on something as insidious as a waffle iron. If you could design something more awful for having food grab onto it than a waffle iron, I'd love to see it because like this seems, uh, this type of thing seems custom made to like grab the food from every conceivable possible angle. And it's got all these nooks and crannies and everything like that. If my procedure works for something like this, it's gonna work for pretty much everything. And in my experience, it has worked for every piece of cast iron that I've ever worked with. Uh, before I get into the video, I just wanna mention that uh, I would recommend this particular waffle iron. It's made by Sugar Creek, uh, Sugar Creek Supplies. Uh, I'm sure there's lots of great waffle irons out there but this is the one that I got I think it makes a really good serving size and I know it seasons up really nice and it works really well I'm gonna put a link down in the description below if you want to get this particular one but again I'm sure there's lots of good waffle irons out there so before I get into the procedure that I use to season cast iron stuff what I need to impress upon you is that uh, Seasoning isn't a one-time process where a pan is unseasoned and you seasoned it and then it's seasoned forever. Seasoning starts with that one-time process where you begin the seasoning process, but then it continues throughout the life of the product, you know, extending past your life into your children and your grandchildren's life because cast iron can last so long. Seasoning is a way of dealing with the tool such that it continues to get better and better with age. So I just wanted to mention that right from the beginning. If you're looking for the, give me the eight second, uh, second explanation for how to do this. Uh, it's really important that you understand that once you do it, there are things you need to do afterwards and we're gonna get to that later on in the video. So let's jump right in. How do you season cast iron stuff? Well, the way that I've approached it is that I've always taken either olive oil or coconut oil. Uh, and the reason for that is because I happen to have those in my house. Now, people will also use uh, animal fats, lard and things like that. I've never used that myself just because I don't really have that kind of stuff kicking around my house. I don't eat bacon or anything like that. So I tend to have olive oil and coconut oil. Uh, but will those other things work? Probably. I'm, I imagine that they would work just fine. But olive oil and coconut oil are, are what I've tended to use. So when I first start off, I warm up the pan. I put olive oil or coconut oil on there. And from now on, I'm just going to refer to them as oil. Uh, I heat it up to a point where it starts thinning out the oil, just up to the point where it maybe uh, starts smoking a little bit. And then what I'll do is I'll take some cornmeal and I'll sprinkle cornmeal around on the the surface. Now, in the case of the waffle iron, I'll take a little bit of a, uh, a brush and like a basting brush and kind of work all of the cornmeal into the cracks. And the point here is to get it so that all the little nooks and crannies that tend to grab at your food get plugged up with things, you know, little bits of, you know, ground up cornmeal, little bits of char, little bits of oil. You want to like plug up all those surfaces. Uh, whenever I've used cast iron stuff, I've always noticed the stuff that you've used for many, many years, it kind of gets that patina of, of use and you know the corners of a, a, a bread pan, uh, for example, uh, get little bits of like cornmeal and stuff in those. Those are the things that really tend to have really easy release. And my feeling on that is it just all these little bits, you know, bits of cornmeal, bits of char, whatever, kind of get into all those corners and make it so that you know, your food isn't able to reach down into those corners and really grab on. So I'll put the oil on the pan, 
bring it to a temperature where it thins out, put some cornmeal on there, mush it around, and then I go right to cooking. Now it's important to know that the first time that you use this, it's probably not gonna be the best results. In fact, I can pretty much guarantee it's not this magical kind of thing where at one moment the pan is unseasoned and then you do this eight second trick to it and then suddenly it's seasoned for the rest of its life. It's a bit of a process. So you do this seasoning process I mentioned with the oil and the uh, cornmeal and then you cook something on it and as you pull that thing up, little bits of that food are starting to work their way in. And then what I do is I just repeat the process. The next time that I use it, a little bit more oil, a little bit more cornmeal, uh, repeat that process of kind of mushing it around. And in my experience, between three to six cooking procedures uh, is a difference between completely unseasoned and to a point where even with the waffle iron, I can kind of pretty much just take the waffle iron and tap it and the waffle will just drop out. So it's important to understand that, that it's not gonna be an overnight thing where you just do this thing and then suddenly it works great. There's gonna be the first couple experiences using this and you know it, things aren't gonna come out super, super well, but you repeat it, you repeat it, you repeat it. And like I said, after three to six uh, uh, repetitions of this, things are gonna start looking pretty good. Now, the important thing at that point is to keep the seasoning on your cookware. And the way that you do that is to not wash it with soap and water. Uh, what I will do is, is, you know, usually I'll, at, at most, I'll take some uh, hot or warm water and I'll just kind of swish it around with a scouring pad and I'll get things out uh, in, in that fashion. Uh, the majority of the time, you know, with things like the waffle iron, I'm not cooking, uh, you know, things like bacon and stuff like that in here. Uh, the majority of the time with this, I don't, I don't clean it at all. That might make me gross or whatever, uh, but you know, I haven't died yet of it. What I will just do is, you know, I'll drop the waffle out. I'll take it and I'll go and hang it back up. I'll keep it closed like this so it's not getting dust on the inside of it. And uh, you know, the next time I use it, it's you know, it's, it's going to heat up. So I guess if germs get in there, they're going to get sanitized anyway. I'm not telling you that this is uh, the best way that you should do it, but I'm just saying this is what I do. It's always worked, and I haven't seemed to have suffered any any ill uh, ill effects of it yet. Uh, but it is really important to just kind of repeat the process going through. So, you know, now and then, like maybe every few times that you are using your cookware, you, you should be putting oil on every time, but sprinkle a little bit of cornmeal on there and, you know, just to help kind of refresh any of those little uh, nooks and crannies that might have been uh, cleared in, during one of your cooking procedures. If I'm going to boil it down in really simple terms, you start with unseasoned cookware, you heat oil and some cornmeal on there, you mush it around, repeat that three to five times, and that should get you to a pretty good state. And as long as you keep re-oiling it and occasionally putting some more cornmeal on there to keep refilling all the cracks, it should retain a really, really good nonstick finish forever, as long as you keep that up. That's it. Thanks for watching. Hey YouTube preppers, if you enjoyed this video, here's another that I think you might like. But before you click on it, I wanted to take a moment to thank all the people you see on the right hand side of your screen. They help to support all the work that I do here over at Patreon.com. If you'd like to join them and get your name added to the list, the link's below.